Hello and welcome to the first episode of Sean Reviews Costco Wines. My name is Sean O'Neill and the genesis of this is, well, as you're all aware, the United States is in the middle of our coronavirus uh, self-distancing slash self-quarantining. And so I am finding myself with a lot more time on my hands sitting at home. And I thought, well, you know, I really like wine and I'm also an extrovert. I like to engage with folks and I like to talk. And so why not start a little video blog and start reviewing wines? So here we go. Um, the, the next uh, thing that had to happen was decide how to organize uh, reviewing wines online and since I live here in Washington State I thought well I could review Washington wines and then I thought no that's probably too limiting and it's also probably been done before and then same thing with any other big wine region like uh, Oregon or Napa Valley although I couldn't afford to review much of the Napa Valley on a regular basis and so I thought you know what's most relevant is probably consumer wines and then I thought well home state of the biggest wine retailer in the world, Costco. And so I will review wines from Costco. And then I thought to further even make it more uh, practical, I'll focus on wines that are less than $15. And so I'm sure that there will be an occasional splurge and uh, we'll see where this goes. I'm envisioning hopefully at least getting 10 episodes out of this. Not that I want to be self-quarantined for that long, but uh, I think 10 episodes would be pretty fun. And if that runs into the end of uh, coronavirus, uh, social distancing, self-quarantine, we'll probably crack something pretty good at the end and uh, just for fun. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Well, first, a little background. Uh, I am not a wine expert. Uh, I am what I would call an advanced enthusiast. I have had a lot of really good wine and a lot of very mediocre wine and some uh, bad wine. And uh, so I, I think I've got a better than average palate, but nowhere near what it could be. So again, this is just for fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think that I can tell you a little bit about the different wines that, uh, that we're going to taste as we go through. And uh, I just have some of these here just to uh, up my cred just a little bit. It's not that I drink many of these on a regular basis, um, although I do drink some Gramercy on a fairly regular basis. So shout out to Gramercy Cellars in Walla Walla, Washington. Um, that is not a paid advertisement by the way uh, but uh, <laughs> not that anyone would pay me to do this anyway but uh, without further ado let's get into the wine that we're going to test for today and so what I picked was this 2016 Chateau Jalousie Bolu Bordeaux Superior and so a little bit about uh, the region here as uh, I'm sure most of you watching are probably already aware of all the different wine regions, but just in case, just in case we get some uh, uh, new wine enthusiasts, Bordeaux is a region in France that is about uh, three quarters of the way. If you go, if you open up your the map on your phone, you go from the top of France and you go about three quarter, two thirds to three quarters down the Atlantic coast, you'll run right into Bordeaux, and uh, Bordeaux is right where the Gironde River meets the uh, uh, Atlantic. Atlantic Ocean and it is probably one of the either the most or one of the top three most famous wine regions in the world and so when you say a Bordeaux what does that actually mean and I know that this is getting into some 101 level stuff but um, um, some folks might find this interesting so Bordeaux is not a grape Bordeaux is a region and so like uh, the rest of France how France labels its wine and how you know what's actually in the bottle is almost always by the region and the region will give you a clue as to what grapes are there are in there so Bordeaux is uh, a red Bordeaux which this is is almost always one of five grapes either uh, it's going to be based off of two either uh, one of two either Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot and then there are three other common blending grapes and those are Cabernet Franc Petit Verdot and Malbec there's still a little bit of Carmenere, Caminere. My French is terrible, so please feel free to correct my pronunciations in the uh, notes below. But uh, Carmenere is uh, still pretty rare in Bordeaux, I think, since the uh, phylloxera uh, outbreak of... 
don't remember what year it was. Uh, Carbonara was uh, really pretty decimated and there's not a whole lot left. Um, and so this Bordeaux that we uh, are going to be drinking is a Bordeaux Superior, which is a lesser designation of Bordeaux. It is not a, a specific region or sub-region of Bordeaux like, say, this here, which is a Chateau Margaux. This is a pretty darn nice bottle of wine or it's not a Graves or it's not a Pouillac or anything like that so so this doesn't have a specific region like this this particular bottle is also 100% Merlot and uh, yeah so without further ado let's uh, let's jump into this so Bordeaux is a as a um, really really beautiful wine and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Bordeaux overall and Bordeaux blends. Most of my, in fact, these are all uh, Bordeaux blends right here. We've got a, a two Washington cabs and a, this is also a cab. Um, these two are empty, but uh, yeah, let's, let's pop into this. All right, so, all right, so. We've got ourselves a, actually at this price point, I'm a little bit surprised. It's a real cork and the cork looks like it's in good shape. This is 2016. 2016 was a, uh, as I recall, was a pretty vaunted year in Bordeaux. And so this is probably going to drink a little bit tight. Um, it, uh, it, Bordeaux is usually not meant to be drunk young, although uh, I should correct that. A lot of Bordeaux, especially like a Chateau Margaux or a first growth Bordeaux or something like that, uh, is usually not meant to be drunk young. This is probably more meant to be drunk young if there is such a thing in Bordeaux. Um, but uh, even in a year like 2016, which I believe was a really landmark year, this is likely to be tight. And so let's, uh, let's take a look here. Right. Well, we've got a nice, uh, beautiful purple color to that. Really nice nose. A little bit irony, which I don't usually associate with Bordeaux, but nice iron notes. Also some, um, Pretty heavy, like cherry. Let's take a sip. Really nice. You're getting a nice um, core of, of uh, cherry fruit, a little bit of cola on that. And um, it is not a huge oak bomb. I'm not hardly getting any, uh, you know, new oak notes, which would be vanilla or caramel or anything like that. A um, little bit of uh, some kind of an herb. I'm, I, I'm not certain what that is. Yeah, really good. Um, some of the, the foresty floor kind of cedar notes that you're used to getting out of a Bordeaux, it's not super concentrated. It's not, um, it's also not incredibly tight, but there are some really grippy tannins and it's uh, still got, or not still, because it's a pretty young wine, but it's it's got some really nice lift from the acidity. And so it's got some structure going on and this could definitely last for, you know, several years. I would say this is a very, very nice Bordeaux. No, no, caveat that, like this is a $10 Bordeaux, but um, um, for $10, this is a really pretty darn nice deal. Let's talk about our rating scale that we're gonna use on this show. I'm not gonna use a point scale, I'm not skilled enough to do that, um, but 
what I think we are going to do is we're going to do a five star rating. And so from one to five stars, five stars is going to be outstanding at any price. And these are all five star wines right here. So five stars would mean off the charts, world class, um, really seek those out. If A, you can find them, B, you can afford them and uh, um, C, yeah, it just, if that's your jam. Uh, four star is going to be outstanding, way better than what you could expect at the price. Uh, three star is going to be a solid deal at the price. Two star is what you would expect at the price. And one star is don't bother. So on this Bordeaux, I would say that this is a really solid three star Bordeaux above average especially at $10 or I actually think that this was seven or eight 99 at Costco and um, really drinks better than what you could uh, or what you should expect at that price. Let's see how it goes with a little bit of food. Let's first try some fat here. We've got some cheese. Mm-hmm. Goes great from the with the cheese. The acid cuts right through that fat and makes a really beautiful um, little pairing. Absolutely delicious. Now let's try some charcuterie here, which is usually my favorite pairing with wine is cured meat. Excuse me. That's really nice. This is showing itself. I'm pretty certain this is going to show itself to be a very good food wine. Like I said, that acidity just really, really lends itself to, to drinking with food. And speaking of acidity, let's see how it goes with acidic stuff. So we got ourselves a little French pickle here. Now, that's a little bit of a hard pairing. I have to say that this glass of wine really stands up to that uh, uh, pickle. That's really pretty remarkable. So we've got a very solid Bordeaux here. We've got it very solid at the price point. And um, I would say if you're in Costco and you're looking for something to crack open on a Tuesday night, this would be a fantastic choice. Um, this would also be a really nice wine if you were, say, throwing a wedding or some other group function and you wanted a case of wine to throw out onto uh, several tables that would please someone that's actually interested in wine but is still approachable enough to please the everyday wine drinker. This would really be a good bottle and it's going to be a little bit more um, uh, just visually striking and, and uh, um, interesting than, you know, buying a, a bottle of two-buck chuck or or whatever it's your local Trader Joe's or a bottle of Kirkland Signature. I'm sure, excuse me, I'm sure we will be reviewing a Kirkland Signature at some point though, so not to, to dismiss Kirkland Signature. But um, yeah, I would say uh, go and, uh, and get yourself a bottle of this wine and as always, drink responsibly. Don't uh, drink to excess. Remember, you can enjoy wine without becoming intoxicated with wine. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining. And I hope in the next couple days, we'll get another episode. I'm not sure what we'll try. But um, yeah, tell your friends that are into wine and uh, um, shoot me a message. Tell me how bad I did. Um, yeah, at the very least, I think what could happen is we can just hashtag this ASMR and people can fall asleep to it. So anyway, thanks for joining. And uh, yeah, stay safe out there and stay healthy. Thanks so much.